Well, welcome to episode 53 of 10 Minute Record Reviews. And this time I'm going to talk about Dr. Lonnie Smith's 1977 album Funk Reaction. And this is a first pressing of this. This came out on Leicester Radio Corporation. And, I'll, and, and the label, I think, is, is relevant to the story of this album. And I'll get to that in a second. First of all, just in terms of what kind of music this is, this is jazz, loosely defined. It's very funky, very disco-inflected jazz. Sometimes it just crosses right over that lane uh, into full-on disco or full-on funk. So it's, it's, it's quite varied. It is, if you're used to Lonnie Smith's soul jazz albums from the late 60s and very early 70s, this is a distinct departure from those. It has a lot of musical quality, but it's a different direction from what one might have heard before from Lonnie Smith. But if you're looking for funk and deep grooves, you're going to be very happy with this album. So Lonnie Smith is one of the great masters of the Hammond organ. And he began his career playing with the George Benson group in the mid-1960s, Benson's original group. And then he branches out and he moves into sort of full-on soul jazz. He puts out an album on Columbia in 67. He then does four consecutive albums on Blue Note. He then moves over to Creed Taylor's label. Uh, well, Creed Taylor had this label CTI, but it was a subsidiary, which was the funkier version of what was already a pretty funky uh, stable of artists, uh, and that was uh, Kudu. So he has an album on Kudu. Then a bit of a break, puts out a live album, which is quite well received, and, and then is picked up by a guy called uh, Sonny Lester. And Lester, just like Creed Taylor had, was a record producer who was experienced in jazz, but cho had chosen to focus in the 1970s very much on jazz funk. And Lester founds two record labels, Groove Merchant, on, on which Lonnie Smith records, and then subsequently Lester Radio Corporation, or LRC, and this, and this is the label LRC that this particular album comes out on. When you're talking about albums that are put out by Sonny Lester on, on his LRC label or on Groove Merchant, or if you're talking about the albums that came out under Creed Taylor's supervision and CTI and Kudu, these are, although they may have, have lead artists identified, you know, like Lonnie Smith is here, these are very much, very much team efforts. Uh, in the case of Creed Taylor, he was relying heavily on Bob James and Don Sabelsky and a whole stable of really talented and really gifted players, composers, arrangers, and so on. And similarly, uh, uh, Lester, who was very much looking at at Taylor as his as his immediate competition and rival, uh, began to well certainly began his efforts by heavily orchestrating uh, with a whole bunch of, of regularly retained sidemen, uh, but also bringing in sort of a, a, a arrangers and, and orchestration to complement the work of the of the lead artist. He backed away from that for a while because he saw that with people like Jimmy McGriff, that the or the soul jazz organist. Uh, they were so talented that they didn't necessarily need that. But at the same time, he's looking at the success Creed Taylor's having with all of this sort of extra sort of in-house work, this sort of what you might call this production team effort. And and he decides he has to move back to that. So he brings in Brad Baker, who's this guy from from, from New York. And, and uh, there's a blogger called Doug Payne who's made this argument, uh, and I couldn't agree more, which is that Essentially, if you're listening to an LRC album where Brad Baker is the, is, is, is the arranger, uh, you're basically listening to a Brad Baker album. Because there are points on this record where, well, there are clearly points in this record where Lonnie Smith is there and he's shining. But there are lots of other places where you're kind of hard pressed to identify exactly where he is. Is he actually playing on the track? And if he is, what's he playing? That's not really clear. The, the normal space given to, given to the solo artist is, is not necessarily present. Other people who have written different songs are much more present in the mix. Uh, and, and so this is, as, as Payne argues, this is really best assessed as, a, as, as, a, as either a Baker album or as a team effort rather than, rather than uh, as a Lonnie Smith album per se. So side one kicks off with, with Funk Reaction, the title track, and this is a fantastic tune. It is, uh, one would be hard pressed to call it jazz. It is very much disco inflected funk or funk inflected disco or, 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 or what have you, but it is great. It is an incredible tune. It has got a, a solid, solid groove. I love the vocal delivery. It's not for everybody, but I, I love it. I'm actually surprised this song never made 
maybe because it's it, it's seen as being in a jazz lane and a jazz album it never made much impact uh, in, you know, on the dance floor but it's it's a great great tune and and for me worth the price of admission to pick this album up used just for that song alone and speaking of Lance Quinn it's got this great chicken scratch guitar all the way through this just you know I mean this is this is something which she could have been proud of this you know it, it is very much in, in, in that kind of a vein then the next two songs, the other two songs on side one, are a little more in a classic 70s jazz funk, not so much in the disco lane. The first is For the Love of It, and the second is, is, is a really good track called, good, called Babbitt's Other Song. For the Love of It is a bit of a lower key tune, than the, than, it's certainly not a, in any way a disco tune uh, compared to the first track. It's, uh, it, it really it, it chugs along pretty nicely. There are some great solos, including Eddie Daniels' excellent tenor solo, which, which I really enjoyed. Uh, you have to wonder, though, uh, where's Lonnie in this? It's really not clear to me where Lonnie Smith is, which is a shame because, because he is a great player himself. Similarly, Babbitt's other song, the last song on the side, is, is a tune where everyone's playing really well, but Lonnie Smith is kind of lost. It's not really clear you know, where he is. That said, it's 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 a great example of really solid 70s jazz funk. If you like jazz funk, you're going to love this tune. Side two starts with It's Changed, which is a uh, very... Now we're really comfortably into a jazz lane, and it's very much in the same area that George Benson was inhabiting in the 1970s. Lots of wonderful jazzy guitar from Richie Hohenberger, who's, who's, a, who's again, one of, the, one of the house players on LRC. Followed by When the Night is Right, again, a little bit lower key as well. It's got dueling solos on keyboards by Yaron Gershovsky, again, another one of the in-house players, and by Lonnie himself. This actually, for me, is, uh, after the title track, probably the biggest highlight on the album. This, this is a really wonderful track. And then finally, the last of the six songs in this album, and the only one written by Lonnie Smith himself, is All In My Mind. And here, Lonnie is singing, Gene Scott is also singing. It's a bit of a duet. Uh, Lonnie himself is sounding exactly like Stevie Wonder here, almost a little too close for comfort. Pretty good, um, not necessarily the, the heights of the previous song or of the title track. Well, what to say about Funk Reaction? If you're looking for deep groove and you're trying to find tracks that you can just put down on the dance floor, very few people will have heard and are just phenomenal, then the title track in this album makes it worth picking up alone. The rest of the album, as I mentioned, is, is pretty good, but again, it is largely a Brad Baker album or, 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 a, or, a, or a collective effort as opposed to a Lonnie Smith album. It's a lot better, I think, than some reviews have it. I put it at about four to five, and I recommend giving it a spin.